let me talk to the people first. Hi guys, Monroe Steel here from Fashion Steel NYC and welcome back to my channel. Do not forget to give your girl a thumbs up and subscribe if you love fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and travel videos. The streets are calling. I don't know where you are, but perhaps you are thinking about coming to Miami or Miami Beach. And as someone who has lived here part-time for the last two and a half months, I'm here to give you Monroe's Guide to Miami. I'm gonna tell you where to stay, where to play, where to eat, where to shop, and links to everything will be down below in the description box. I will also put timestamps for everything as well. So if you're planning a trip, a vacation, a vacation, a staycation to Miami Beach, I got the goods for you. So without further ado, we're going to jump into my outfit details because this is a fashion channel first. And then we will get into everything you need to know about coming to Miami Beach. Starting with these Dior sunglasses. These are the Dior So Light sunglasses in the nude color. I got these from Essence. Um, they come in and out of stock and they are very much giving bug and fabulousness and just over the topness, which is what Miami is all about. If I can still find them anywhere online, of course I will link them down below for you all. I'm wearing my Chanel dangle earrings. This lip is called Thrilling. It is by Rare Beauty, which I think is a beauty brand by Selena Gomez, don't quote me on that. But this is a very close second to the ColourPop Limbo, which is always sold out. So I will link this down below, you can check it out. I am wearing a Chanel scarf as a top, tied it in the back. I've worn this a few times here in Miami. A nice way to dabble into designer without spending too much money. And also you can wear a scarf so many ways. You can tie it on the bag, you can wear it in your hair, you can wear it as a top, you can wear it as a belt, you can wear it as a sarong, it just works. And then the pants are new in from Boohoo. They are the Plize, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, pants they are super duper long and they come in white they come in like this golden orangey color if they're still available i will link them i top off the look with some accessories my favorite bottega pouch bag in the baby sky blue which is one of my favorite colors it also ties into one of the colors into this scarf and my brand new versace sandals with thick gold chains around the ankle and around the toe. I got the last of these from Ball Harbor Shops, Versace, and I'm very happy that I got them because they are super comfortable and super sexy. So if I can find any of this stuff online, it will be linked down below. Now that you have the outfit details, we're gonna jump right in to where to stay. Keep in mind, these are just my opinions. If you have places that you like to stay, if you live in Miami, you have other tips and tricks and tools and places, tell me down below in the comments because I'm looking for places to visit. Okay, so where to stay. If you're coming to Miami and you're coming to party, which, I don't suggest. I'm a woman of a certain age. I'm in my mid thirties. I'm not here to party, so I wouldn't really know. But if you wanna be where the party is, you need to stay in Miami Beach and you need to stay anywhere below Fifth Street, which is considered South Beach, anything below Fifth Street, somewhere on Collins, which is oceanfront. That's where the parties are. I don't live anywhere near that place. I, I didn't see not one spring breaker when that was going on because that's not where I live and that's not where I want it to be. But if you are looking to party, if you are looking to be where the action is, that's where you need to stay. Now, a lot of people visiting, they're like, oh, well, isn't Miami my, and Miami Beach the same thing? Not really. Miami Beach is actually the island. It's called the island of Miami Beach. The rest of Miami is just Miami, which is basically known as the mainland, or that is where downtown Miami is, that's where Brickell is, that is where Midtown is. So yeah, if you want to stay on the beach, you need to stay in Miami Beach, which is just a little bit different than the mainland. That's where you want to party. Any hotel on Collins below Fifth Street, 
that's where the party is. Now, if you want to be close to the action, but, but you know, still have a little quiet time, I would say anywhere from, I would say 15th Street to about 25th Street. It's a little bit quieter there, but you're still close enough. If you want to get down to the action, you can. If you are not really a party person, don't stay on Collins. Don't stay oceanfront because you're gonna hear techno music all night. The restaurants are open. There is a curfew. You'll have to check and see what that curfew is depending on when you're coming or not. But I think all the curfews are lifted. If you stay on Collins, you're gonna hear techno music. The restaurants will be playing loud music and it's just not an enjoyable experience for someone who is looking to relax. So there you have it. <laughs> if you wanna kind of really relax and also still be oceanfront, you wanna stay in North Beach. North Beach is pretty much anything above 30th Street. It gets quieter and quieter the higher you go, the more decadent the hotels get. The oceanfront pools are amazing. The oceanfront service is amazing. You wanna stay in North Beach if you're not looking to party and you just wanna relax. North Beach. And some really great hotels in North Beach are Faina. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, please forgive me. But Rose and I actually went there for like brunch one day. Their beach service and cabanas are really nice. They have some delicious food. The drinks are good. The vibe is nice. It's the hotel that has like that dinosaur bone kind of encased in glass. It's an Instagram dream. It's a lovely hotel. that. I would recommend that place if you want a quiet experience, but it is quite pricey. The next hotel I would recommend in North Miami Beach, and I have to get my notes y'all, because this is a lot, is the Miami Beach Edition. I've actually been there as well. I've had lunch there. They have like three or four restaurants, all of which are great. I've actually been to like an outdoor party-esque type of event there as well. I love the vibes, it's very rich. The hotel smells amazing. I've heard really good things. I've never stayed there because it's extraordinarily expensive. But another place that I would recommend in North Beach if you're looking to just relax. Really any hotel in North Beach, you kind of will be good to go if you're looking for a relaxing moment. Again, if you're trying to turn up, you're gonna stay below Fifth Street. Now, if you don't mind not staying on the beach but still being able to get the to the beach in like a five to 10 minute walk, I would recommend the Kipton Hotel Palomar, which is kind of on the cuffs of like Midtown and North Beach. It's still really close to like all of the action and not very far from the beach. The rooms are really nice. I've actually stayed at this hotel for a staycation and I loved it. The service is amazing. They also have a really cool restaurant downstairs. It is called Osteria Morini. It's an Italian restaurant, super cute. The vibes are really good. We went there for my girl Vanna's birthday. All of the food was really delicious. I would suggest getting the seafood pasta. That was really delicious. And any of their like cheese and meat trays are really good. I loved their drinks as well. Service was really nice. This hotel does have like a really cute rooftop pool and like different cool little areas on the rooftop to chill. The price is really amazing. I think you can get a room for close to 200 a night. So if you're looking to experience everything that Miami Beach has to offer, but you're more on a budget, I would recommend Hotel Kipton Palomar South Beach because you can do a lot of stuff. It's also really close to Lincoln Road, which is one of the kind of like little shopping areas of Miami Beach. Now, if you just don't care about being close to the beach and you just wanna see the water and you just wanna relax, I would definitely recommend East Miami Hotel. This hotel is in Brickle. Brickle is kind of like a little city. It's almost like a mini New York. There are lots of skyscrapers, lots of very tall buildings. It has a very New York vibe. So if you're coming from New York and you still want that New York feel with tall high buildings and rooftop views, and you can see all of Miami, then Brickle is kind of where you want to stay. East Miami Hotel is my personal favorite. I normally stay there anytime I'm visiting Miami. The rooms are wonderful. I love the Bay View rooms. I feel like they get the best views of the sunrise in the morning. Like literally, you can watch the sunrise over the water. It's the most magical thing. And one of the things that made me want to actually move part-time to Miami, it's so stunning and calming. 
The room service is incredible. East Miami has two restaurants. It has a rooftop restaurant called Sugar. It also has like another restaurant on the top too. It's more like a tea room almost, like a hidden little situation. I'm not even sure if that's back open. I think it is. They also have a restaurant on like the fourth floor, somewhere in the middle that is more kind of Mediterranean food. Definitely hit up the rooftop, definitely hit up Sugar. I love Sugar. They have some really great like sushi. I love their drinks. They have all different kinds of like cocktails which are delicious if you go at night. The whole city is lit up. It's a beautiful view. They have foliage everywhere. Like it's a perfect place for photos in the morning if you stay there, like just go early and take photos. Amazing, love the food, love the service, love Miami East. The balconies are big enough for you to do a whole exercise routine on and I did. I definitely did. They also have a pool. The pool is really beautiful. It's really nice. If you go early, you can get a good spot. You can chill by the pool all day. It's just a wonderful place to stay. I also love that it is connected to a mall. Like literally, you can come out of one of the elevators and walk right into an outdoor mall. It's kind of an indoor outdoor feel. Has tons of stores. They have, I believe they have a sack. They have Intermix, they have a Sephora, they have an Apple store. They have a few cool restaurants in this outdoor mall, ice cream, like literally anything you can imagine. Oh, they also have a Chanel beauty store, which I love to go get my Chanel face wipes from. Everything you need is like right there. So I would definitely recommend East. Also, if you're looking for something a little different, you can stay in downtown Miami, which is literally right next to Brickle or right before Brickle. Brickle is a little bit more south than downtown Miami. Um, I normally stay at the Co Coaboa. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But if you watch any of my earlier Miami vlogs, I usually stay at a Domeo. It's kind of like an Airbnb, but better. Domeo has since gone out of business and has been replaced with a new name. I will link it down below. It's the same building though. There are beautiful rooms. It's almost like you have a little mini apartment. You have a kitchen, you have a balcony, and you have access to all of the amenities in this building. This building is kind of like a residential building, but somehow some of the floors are for like Airbnb type situations. They have a beautiful pool. They have a little like game room that's huge like it has so many different sitting areas i've taken tons of pictures in this like community room they have billiard tables they have pool tables they have tvs they even have a little coffee maker in there you can go and get a coffee every morning i always enjoy my time when i stay here it's really close to a lot of things one of my favorite restaurants is right around the corner so oh and it's really really close to Red Rooster Miami. There is a Red Rooster in New York and now they also have one in Miami. It's super close to downtown, the downtown Miami area. We're gonna get into food, but right now we're talking about where to stay. And pretty much those are all the places I have stayed or have been in in Miami. I'm sure there's tons more, but I just wanna only kinda like mention the places that I've been, I've seen. Um, I know the quality of them for you guys. So if you have any more places that are great to stay, definitely put them down in the comments and I'll try and check them out. Look, I'm coming. I'm coming. I got a few more things to tell them and I'm hitting you, okay? Okay. <sighs> the streets don't sleep, y'all. Anywho, let's get into where to eat because I know <laughs> A lot of y'all are foodies and I'm a tourist, so y'all know I love decadent things, I love smells, I love luxury, and I love food. Those are probably my three favorite things. So let's get into where to eat in Miami Beach. All right, first up is Makoto Ball Harbor. This is like a Japanese fusion restaurant. I've actually eaten there a few times and I've vlogged it both times. So if you wanna see like close-ups of the food, what it looks like, definitely check out my Miami vlogs. Makoto is A plus. Everything you eat is going to be delicious. The price point for the service and for the food is amazing. I love their grilled skirt steak. 
I'm telling y'all, this is some of the best steak I ever had in my entire life. They have a really delicious like rice that's good. The sushi, all of the sushi is good. Their spicy tuna roll, perfection. I think they have real lamb chops, so good. All of the drinks are delicious. Like the ambiance, it's fire, being that it's at Ball Harbor Shops, it's very rich, very fancy, lots of foliage. I mean, dress up and go for lunch, dress up and go for dinner, make a reservation, you will not be disappointed. This is further north because it is in Ball Harbor Shops. If you're staying somewhere in South Beach, it'll be about eh, a 10, 13, maybe $15 Uber ride. The great thing about Miami Beach is Ubers are fairly cheap. And that's speaking as, you know, someone coming from New York, like all the millions of other New Yorkers who escaped New York and came to Miami in the year 2020. <laughs> I'm one of them. I'm not ashamed. You will love it. And you can also go and shop after at Ball Harbor Shops. We're gonna get into where to shop later. For now, let's stick to food. I have also been to Mr. Chow. That's a place that you go when you just wanna be seen, when it's just kinda like a vibe. I think it's inside of the W South Beach Hotel. It's a very sceney place. Literally the last time I went, I saw the Queen uh, Jocelyn Hernandez, the Puerto Rican princess, and her entourage. It's full of celebrities but the food is awful. Now, if you just looking to make a scene, to make a splash, to hobnob with celebrities, then go ahead and hit up Mr. Chow any day of the week, you're bound to see someone. But the food is horrendous and I would not recommend. Now, a, a favorite of mine for brunch, I've already spoken about this, but it is Red Rooster Miami, which is in Overton or Overtown, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it, which is basically very close to downtown Miami. It's delicious. Now, I've gone for dinner and literally had the best oxtail I've ever had in my entire life. Like, they seasoned that oxtail, it was just falling off the bone. It was like peppers and a sauce and there was some plantains and y'all, it was delicious literally the best oxtail I've ever had in my life. It, it's, it's worth it, make a reservation. It's actually really hard to get in for brunch because I think normally on Sundays they have a gospel brunch from I think noon to about three, don't quote me on that, make sure you check the website first. But it's harder than Fort Knox to get a reservation there for Sunday brunch, like, and I've been during Sunday brunch, literally caught the tail end of the gospel choir. Try to get an outdoor table because the outdoor ambiance is just super duper cute. They have like little swings, they have an open air bar, they have ceiling fans, lots of foliage. It's just, it's a vibe in a moment. Dress up, look cute, and go have a wonderful brunch at Red Rooster. It's also black owned, which is amazing. The service is really great for brunch. You can get the basics. I think they have chicken and waffles. I think they have some omelets. The brunch is good, but like if you want a decadent meal, go for dinner. All right guys, another brunch favorite in Miami. This place is located in Brickle and it's literally right across, like right around the corner from East Miami. So if you stay at East Miami, literally just walk five minutes to B, Bistro and Bakery. I actually learned of this place my very first time coming to Miami. I had brunch there literally like, I don't know, maybe like six years ago and it was amazing. The brunch, everything on the menu is good. The mimosas, the passion fruit mimosa y'all. Get that, get that for me, please. You'll love it. I've had the pancakes. I've had the salmon burger. I've had the salmon and scrambled eggs. I've had the granola bowl. I've had the Nutella croissant. I've eaten here a lot, y'all. The steak and eggs. Dang, I should have made a reservation today. The croissant French toast. And of course, because it's a bakery, they have really delicious like baked goods. The coffee is really good too. It's hard to find good coffee in Miami. I've noticed that. They don't take reservations, which kind of sucks, 
but again it's literally right there by that mall so if you just walk up to the counter put your name on the list they text you you just go walk around the mall for like 10 minutes they call you back and you can have one of the best brunches you're probably gonna have in Miami, B Bistro and Bakery. Tell them what Rose sent you. Now for another brunch, I don't know why I only eat brunch. I mean, of course you can eat lunch at these places too, but another favorite is Yardbird. Southern Table and Grill and Bar, I think it's called. Y'all know I love Yardbird. If you watch any of my Miami vlogs, chances are at least once I'm gonna eat it at Yardbird and it's so good. Like everything is delicious. The chicken and waffles, the shrimp and grits. The shrimp and grits make you want to slap your mama, like for real, for real. They have so many cool like cocktails that are, you know, Southern based, like sweet tea and like lemonade. And of course they have all of the best cocktails. Everything is good. Like the chicken tastes like somebody grandma seasoned it. The biscuits, they give you these biscuits that are so buttery and flaky and like fluffy and moist and then they give you this kind of like sweet honey butter and like this apple dipping sauce y'all it's the stuff of dreams go to yardbird if you can't get in anywhere chances are you can always get in at yardbird and the food is good yardbird is located here on miami beach around mid beach i think 16th street you're gonna love it if you end up staying at hotel palomar kipton it's not too far of a walk or a ride so yeah definitely check it out and another one of my favorite like hidden gems for a quick lunch or even dinner is called choto mate i forgot what that means in whatever language it is i think it's like peruvian and japanese mix i think it means okay or something like that some kind of slang but it's kind of a hidden gem like you might miss it if you're not actually looking for it it's kind of between Joe Malone and there is a, gosh, what is this place called? The Burger Place, I'm not gonna think of it. Oh, Five Guys. So it's right between like Joe Malone and I think Five Guys. It's on this little tiny street. Just Google map it, the address will be down below. But like, it's literally a white building and all you see is a huge like white concrete door and behind that door is like the most amazing ambiance you're ever gonna see at this Peruvian slash, I think Japanese restaurant. Ugh. It's so cool. They have like these cherry blossoms inside. There's literally a huge palm tree in the middle of the restaurant around a bar that has a huge rock that almost looks like a volcano. It has murals on the walls. If you go in the bathroom, everything is like blue, like it's like blue light. Really, really cool great for Instagram photos. If you go during lunch, like during the week, there's literally nobody there. You have the whole entire place to yourself. I think on Wednesdays, everything is 50% off. So if you can go on a Wednesday, do that. The cocktails are delicious. They're a little pricey, but absolutely worth it. I love their Branzino bento box. They have all different kinds of bento boxes. You can do a shared menu for like 55 bucks a person. I always go for the bento box because it comes with a little bit of everything. You get rice, you get fish, you get like sauteed vegetables, you get a little bit of sushi. Ugh, it's delicious and the ambiance is worth it. Now, if you love a good taco, head to Bodega. Now, I'm gonna get some flack from people who probably live in Miami about Bo Bodega's tacos not being the best. The Look, you gotta go when they first open, okay? You can't go when they be struggling all day trying to feed the masses. Go early for lunch, find a nice little cute table outside, maybe get yourself some of their steak chimichurri taco or their coconut shrimp taco. Oh my God, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Or their tequila soaked shrimp tacos, like, <laughs> They're good. I absolutely love them. They're seasoned to perfection. Like you all know sometimes when you get a fish taco, it's never quite good because it's just not seasoned. Here they season the meats and I love it. Go for the ambiance, go for the tacos, but stay for the margaritas. The lime margaritas and the mango margaritas are some of the best margaritas on the beach. I promise you. That lime margarita, it will sneak up on you. It will have you ready to live your best life. 
Sometimes I just go and I get a margarita. I'm not even gonna lie. And I walk down the street with What you gonna do? I love Bodega. The food is wonderful. The owner, I'm not gonna put that on the internet, but y'all can look that up for yourselves. Anywho, that's normally where I get my tacos from. There's also a really great taco spot at Time Out New York, Miami which just opened here in Miami Beach. It's kind of like, almost like a cafeteria. I think there's one in New York as well. Time Out New York, Miami has a bunch of different restaurants inside. They have a vegan place, they have a pizza place, they have a dessert place, they have a taco place, they have a Peruvian place. You can get a poke bowl, you can get a pizza, you can get tacos. Um, and then they have a really cute outdoor area where you can eat outside. They also have a cool little bar. If you go to the bar, Please get a frosé. Now I know all frosés are not created equal. This is the best frosé I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know what that put, they put in there. I don't know if it's like unicorn dust, Jesus tears, I'm not sure, but delicious. The best frosé I've ever had in my entire life. Get one from the bar. There's a bar right in the middle, trust me, it's delicious. They also have really great tacos at this spot in time out New York, Miami, more of an authentic taco for sure. A, a, a little bit smaller, packs a bit punch, the flavor is delicious. If I had to get a taco, I would go to Time Out New York or I would go to Bodega. So Time Out New York is, I think it's also somewhere about 16, 15. Don't quote me on the addresses. I'm gonna link the directions to everything down below. Now, if you are a health nut or a vegetarian, I only got one option for you because I eat meat. That option is Carrot Express. It's kind of like a chain restaurant. They have a few of them all over Miami. The one that I know about is very close to Hotel Kipton Palomar, around that area. And it's delicious. They have salads, they have bowls, um, they have vegan snacks and they have smoothies. I love their acai berry smoothie, their strawberry smoothie. They have the best carrot cake. I mean, carrot cake isn't healthy, so I'm not sure why it's on the menu, but I'm guessing it's called Carrot Express, so they gotta have carrot cake. Y'all, this carrot cake is moist and delicious. Probably the best carrot cake I've ever had in my life, and I'm a carrot cake aficionado, so I know. They also have this salmon pesto bowl so good, it has like rice that comes with it and a little bit of salsa and then they have this like lime cilantro sauce. Y'all, I would eat that sauce by itself. Like literally get the lime cilantro sauce, pour it all over everything and just eat it. Like trust me, it's delicious. So that's like the one kind of healthy place I got for you. Sorry I couldn't be more helpful in that manner but it's delicious. There's also a place, what is that place called? Pure Vita? Is it Pure Vita? They have a few of those around the city. There's also one in the Miami Design District. They have a lot of vegan, vegetarian meals and things you can eat there, smoothies as well. Last but certainly not least is Bibelos or Bibelo. This restaurant is located on Collins, but it's the back end of Collins, not the front end, not the beach. And I would go there for a nice Mediterranean dinner. The ambiance, very sexy, it's very dark in there. There's a little DJ who spins all night. They have those cute little like, very Mediterranean, almost Moroccan like tea kettles and the drinks are good. The best octopus I've ever had in my entire life. Yes, the best lamb chops. The lamb chops are in the top three, the best I ever had. They have couscous, they have all that good stuff if you're looking for a sultry, vibe a really good date night spot dress up make a reservation there it's pretty easy to get in there and uh make a night of it so for now that's all i got when it comes to restaurants if you know of any cooler ones definitely sound off below in the comments there are tons like carbone and prime and Anything owned by Dave Grutman and Pharrell, like Swan. I feel like those places are places to see and be seen. Some of them have good food, some of them, some of them don't. I haven't actually been to any of those, so I can't speak on it yet, but I plan to hobnob soon and I'll report back. All right guys, now when it comes to playing, I don't got nothing for y'all. I've been in the house, look. 
the most I go out is what y'all see on my vlogs. Any other time, I'm in the house because it's still quite a panini. And although I've had my VC shots, I still got about two more weeks before my second CV shot kicks in. So, um, yeah, I'm in the house pretty much. Ain't nobody playing. They not. But I mean, as you all know, Miami is pretty much open. Restaurants are outside, so people can eat outside. I think restaurants are open full percentage. Maybe some are 50%, but most are like open full capacity inside as long as all of the tables are like six feet apart. The beach is open. <laughs> It's always open. I don't know about any clubs and parties or I'm sure there are pool parties and all types of things. Y'all ain't gonna catch me at none of those probably ever on this channel. I don't do hookah so I'm not gonna be at a hookah bar. So I'm just an auntie over here. For real, for real. But if I wanna be playful, I will just rent a yacht. Now, a lot of you have asked what yachting company I use when I went for New Year's and it's called Miami Yachting Company. I will link it down below. It's basically a whole fleet of yachts that you can rent for several hours a day. Um, I think you can rent them from three hours to four hours to six hours. I would recommend six hours because trust me, you're gonna need a whole day. They usually sail around the bay. They show you like all the fancy rich people's houses and you just have a good time. You have your music, you can bring your own food, your own drinks and just have a ball. I would highly, highly, highly recommend it. There are different boats, different fleets, different sizes, so you'll have to just look for yourself. It will probably run you upwards of two Gs for six hours for any boat, but there are some that are a little bit cheaper, maybe in the 1400 to 1800 range, depending on if you just wanna do four hours. You can always split it up amongst your friends. Make sure you all get your CV test first, and if you're looking for those, they do have them free here in Miami Beach. There is a testing center at the convention center on 18th Street in the parking lot. I'm pretty sure it's still there. They do the rapid, and they also do the antigen or antibody. Um, you get the rapid within like literally a few hours. The other one, it takes 24 to 72 hours to get back to you, so yeah. Y'all, I had to get a drink because I don't think I've ever talked this much in a video. A little rosé. It is after five here, by the way. So that's how I like to have fun on a yacht, like grown-up fun. Everything else for me is for the birds. So <laughs> like I said, if you're looking for a party party, party yachty yachty, um, I don't know what to tell you. So now, let's get to where to shop because there's so many places. So many. So if you're coming and you want to shop and you're more on a budget, definitely head to Lincoln Road Shopping Street, Shopping Mall. It is on South Beach. It's pretty much 17th Street. It's just a long street, outdoor street of shopping. Of course, they have a Zara, they have an H&M, they have a Victoria's Secret, they have a Joe Malone, a bunch of different like sunglass places, sunglass hut, and just a lot of like cool little shops for you to check out. It's a very long road and at the end of it is the beach. So it's a great little fun place to just walk through, see what they have. There's a few restaurants, actually quite a few restaurants all along the way. I think they even have a few places that do hookah, um, outdoor hookah there if you're into that, you could walk all the way down to the end and then just go to the beach. So it's a great shopping street. If you're staying at Hotel Kipton, it's very close to there. Palomar, it's very close to there. It's literally one block away from Yardbird. So if you want to eat at Yardbird and then shop, that's a little great little transition to do. Also, if you're really into like antiquing and thrifting, every Sunday, the whole street kind of turns into a flea market where vendors come out, they sell everything from like home decor, knickknacks, to furniture, to uh, vintage jewelry and vintage bags and just all kinds of things. There's a hat stand, there's jewelry stands, there's a designer boutique. 
kind of vendor as well that has Chanel and Valentino and all of those things, a few vintage things as well. So yeah, definitely check that out. It happens usually every Sunday starting at about 10 to about 6. I would try and come closer to the earlier in the day when people are setting up so you can get the best things. It doesn't happen every single Sunday, but almost every Sunday. If I can find like a link to the schedule, I'll put it down below. But definitely worth a trip to Lincoln Road. Another great place to shop is the Miami Design District. Everybody kind of knows about the Miami Design District. There's lots of like murals and lots of art there. And they have all of the designer stores. They have Gucci, they have Dior. Also in Dior, at the top of Dior, they have the Dior Cafe, which I went to, I think two years ago, or maybe one year ago, which is really cool. They have like little statues up there. It's really nice. You can get a very overpriced drink and just chill with your friends, take some photos. I'm not sure if that is open due to the panoramic. And I'm saying the word panoramic, and not saying the other word because I don't want to be demonetized. If they are open, just check online and it'll let you know. They have Tom Ford, they have a Bottega there, Fendi, every designer store you can think of, Prada, they have it there. And it's really just a cool little outdoor area. It's also just kind of a place to see and be seen. Literally every time I go, I feel like I see Jonathan. Y'all know Jonathan? That's like Kim Kardashian's friend. He's everywhere, like everywhere I go, he's there, but that might be saying that he's mixy, but then again, I would be mixy because I'm always seeing him, so maybe I'm mixy, who knows? A really cool restaurant there as well is Swan, and that is Dave Grubman and Pharrell's restaurant. The ambiance is cool, the music is always popping every time I walk past there. I've never actually eaten there, but I heard the food leaves something to be desired. I would just go for the ambiance, period. The Simonette store is also there. I get asked about that knit top that I can wear so many different ways. I have it in green, I have it in white, I also have it in black. I got those tops at Simonette and they have a literal store in the Miami Design District. They have some really cool things in there. I love going there. Miami Design District also carries 260 sample sale. Now, if you've watched any of my sample sale shop with me vlogs when I was in New York, you know all about 260 sample sale. And if you don't, follow 260 sample sale on Instagram. They have one in Miami, they have one in LA, they have one in New York. Literally all the designer sample sales, they kind of walk you through so you can watch their stories and see what they have so you know to go. Recently I went to an Aquazura shoe sample sale here in Miami in the design district. You would have seen that in a previous vlog. Everything was like 70% off y'all. I almost went crazy in there. I had like 10 boxes of shoes in my hand, but I only bought two. Anywho, they have those sample sales there as well. So if you're looking for some really good shopping, a, a nice mix of like mid-tier to very high-end designer. They have a Ghani there. They also have a Reformation there. They have the 260 sample sale there. They have a cost there. So those are a little bit more mid-tier, not as expensive, but you just wanna be in that area. Definitely check out the Miami Design District. And that area is more midtown. It's a little bit north of downtown Miami which is a little bit north of Brickell, which brings us to the mall I always shop at when I'm in Brickell, which is also connected to East Miami Hotel. I can never remember the name of it. It's called Brickell City Center. Brickell City Center. Now they have a lot of shops and things and restaurants there as well. So if you're staying in Brickell or if you're staying in downtown Miami, it's super close. You can definitely check that place out. It's a nice little place to shop. Like I wish they had more. I mean, it's pretty huge. It's like three or four floors. Definitely a beautiful place to take photos. I just wish they had a little bit more in terms of like clothing for women. But it's still a good place. They do have the Chanel Beauty. I think they do have a Saks. Um, they have a Zara. I think they have a Forever 21, I'm not, I'm not sure. Don't give me the line. But yeah, a cool place to check out if you're staying in Brickle. Now, if you come to spend some money and you wanna be what a rich people are, then you need to go to Ball Harbor Shops. I absolutely love Ball Harbor Shops because they have really all of the same stores um, of the Miami Design District 
without the crowds. Miami Design District can get pretty crowded. It's really a kind of touristy place to go when you want to shop. The lines are long to get into the stores. And if you want to just bypass all of that, just go to Ball Harbor Shops. Like I said, it's about anywhere from 10 to a $20 Uber ride there because it's in North Beach, but it's totally worth it again. A delicious restaurant there is Makoto, so you can eat at Makoto and then shop to your heart's content. Ball Harbor Shops is probably the, one of the most beautiful outdoor indoor malls I've ever seen in my life. It's stunning. You pull up to the ballet and you walk out and like everyone's looking at you. <laughs> really, it feels like high school. When you pull up to like the valet drop off, literally there's a restaurant at this entrance, there's a restaurant at this entrance and you kind of go in and everyone's just kind of looking at your outfit and like all of the Lambos are lined up and Rolls Royces and like it's a it's a place to see and be seen so I mean if you're trying to catch a team you're trying to catch a millionaire maybe a billionaire you want to make sure you look good just just do make sure you look nice but I always enjoy my experiences at Wild Harbor Shop it is one of the only places that has a Chanel store like with bags and everything. They don't have that open yet in Miami Design District. Although I think one is supposed to open either this fall or next fall. The Chanel store at Ball Harbor Shops, incredible. Of course, they have an even Marcus, they have a Saks, they have a Bottega, they have the Gucci's, they have a Fendi, they have maybe like three or four restaurants. It's a beautiful place to shop without the lines. There are no really long lines to get into stores how there is at the Miami Design District. So if you just want an elevated shopping experience, head to Ball Harbor Shops. They also have Hillstone there, which is one of my favorite restaurants. Get the artichoke dip and the chicken sandwich. It's good. If you don't go to Makoto, you want just more of a family restaurant type feel, go to Hillstone. That's upstairs at Ball Harbor Shops and thank me later. Now, if you really want to shop shop, but you want to avoid all crowds, you're going to have to head to Coral Gables, which is eh, it's about eh, 15 minutes south of like Brickell. It's more in Coral Gables to the shops at Merrick Park. I've only been there once to their name and Marcus, and it was a whole different shopping experience mainly because only the very affluent rich live in Coral Gables and most of them are elderly. Don't come for me y'all. This is, this is just my observation. But there are lots of really nice open air restaurants there. They have a CB2 there. They have a few like home stores there that you can actually shop in. Um, they also have a really great Neiman Marcus and inside they have, you know, a Gucci, they have the Valentinos, the Bottegas, they have the Louis Vuitton store. So if you want to avoid all crowds, but still like get a good mixture of shopping and be with the top probably 1% here in Miami. Coral Gables, the shops at Merrick Park is where you wanna go. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm definitely planning on going back and shooting some content there. I will say I did get a few stares, but I'm pretty sure it was just men like thinking maybe they had a shot in hell. Very old men. <laughs> I'm gonna get ripped apart for this video, I already know, but look, I'm only speaking facts here, guys. Only facts. Y'all, I'm really cracking myself up here. Anywho, now, last but not least, what to pack. Miami is a very colorful town. Please don't come in with your beige, white, and black. I mean, you can, but it's very boring. Go ahead and like wear some color, you know, throw on some pink, maybe a splash of orange, maybe do a red lip, like have fun. And if you really just don't know, I have tons of blog posts with what I've been wearing in Miami if you're looking for fun vacation dresses, cute swimsuits, little tiny dresses, things to wear on a boat, things to wear out, the perfect boat shoe, the perfect heels, then definitely check out my blog, fashionstealnyc.com. You can also just download the Like to Know It app and follow me, Monroe Steele, to shop pretty much everything I post on Instagram. You can shop all of my looks that way. I'll also put a link down to it below in my description box. So if you like this outfit and all my other fashions, this is pretty much, you know, the kind of stuff you can wear here in Miami. And 
have a good time and still look good and feel comfortable and make amazing memories. And so yeah, Miami is all about having fun. So definitely consider visiting, but don't bring your tomfoolery. Pack a few masks and please keep it six feet apart. And I know a lot of you have been DMing me and emailing me and leaving comments saying that you're visiting and if we could meet up. Maybe in about two or three weeks when my VC shot kicks in, but for now, the answer is no. Um, but hopefully, this video can let you know where I would take you shopping, where I would take you out to eat, where we can play and have fun and shop and do it all up. So I've linked everything down below for you guys in the description box. If you have any additional questions, please do drop them in the comments. Also, if you have any of any suggestions of places I should visit, things I should do, things I need to see, definitely put that in the comments as well. I've also linked two, actually three blog posts, just kind of guides that I've put together down below in the description box for you all. And if you have enjoyed today's video and would like to see more videos like this, please do not forget to give your girl a thumbs up. Let YouTube algorithm know that this video should be shown to other people. Please do subscribe. I would love to have you as a part of the family. I'm really trying to get to 50K. And also you can click the notification bell so that anytime I post a new video, you will get notified, you will not miss it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching, oh, the streets are calling. And of course, your girl got to answer. I'll see y'all in the next one. Cheers.